What the fox is up, all you internet junkies? I am the Fax Fox, and on today's episode, I'm changing up the format a little bit. Instead of covering three stories, I'm switching it up to one story. This way, I can keep the videos within a five to six minute time frame, which makes them much more watchable for a more wider audience. I can put out more content, uh, but cover it in shorter stories, and that way you guys can watch just the stories you really want to, instead of having to watch one video of three stories just to watch the one story you're interested in. The other thing that I wanted to say before we move forward and keep this within that six minute time frame is I switched up the set a little bit. Um, that's because I don't want to jump back and forth between two locations. Um, so just one set, one location. You'll actually probably see through this little background, the old set over there. Not using that anymore. Sticking to this one set location. Still gonna have the cuts because I lose my place. I'm not that great on the camera. Opening up. Um, so with that said, I think that's everything out of the way that I wanted to say. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's jump into the first story. With all that said, let's jump into the story that I'm covering for this episode. And that is, avoid poisonous black and white caterpillars. This story uh, hits home a little bit because it does focus on the general area that I live in um, and the surrounding area. I actually saw uh, somebody I know post this into my Facebook stream recently. Even though this story's been around for a long time, you're still gonna see people sharing it every time these caterpillars caterpillars come into season. So these are known as tussock moth caterpillars. Um, and again, they're not technically poisonous or venomous, but they cause an allergic reaction, much like stinging nettle or poison ivy. Uh, that's the kind of reaction you can, you can expect to get in most cases when coming in contact with the fur of this caterpillar. Um, so let's get into the exact details. Um, scroll down here. Um, so this is what the post that you might see looks like. Have you seen this caterpillar? If so, don't touch it. Now they're not wrong. Most people, almost everybody who comes in contact with this is gonna have some kind of allergic reaction with it. So you shouldn't touch it if you see it. And it's gonna look essentially fully white with some black uh, striping down the center, dotting, sometimes striping, it depends on the caterpillar uh, individually. Uh, but that's generally what they look like. Uh, so the post also might include a warning uh, that sounds like this. Uh, little white and black caterpillars all over are poisonous. They are apparently new to the area. Not new, they've been around since 2011. Doctors say there has been numerous kids having reactions to them. Yes, again, anybody that comes into contact with these caterpillars is going to have an allergic reaction to them though some may have minor and some may have severe, like any allergic reaction. Uh, the rash spreads fast. The caterpillars have long white hairs that embed in the skin and send poison throughout the body. That's not true. Um, they, again, just have an effect much like stinging nettle or poison ivy. Uh, they are not embedding themselves in your skin. Um, do not touch and do not let your kids touch. They look cute and fuzzy, but they are not. Please repost to everyone you know with little kids. I think everyone you know in general should be aware that touching these caterpillars can cause an allergic reaction. Um, this is really a chemical defense. Um, it's poison in the same sense that you get a bump from a mosquito bite. Um, it's just the reaction that we have as humans to this caterpillar's uh, fur. In most cases, it can be taken care of by washing the affected area with soap and water and then applying either ammonia of some kind or um, calamine lotion. If you're going to use ammonia, I highly recommend against peeing on it. This is not a jellyfish thing, and I might je cover jellyfish things later on, but don't pee on the affected area. If you have ammonia in the house for cleaning, apply that, otherwise calamine lotion. Washing with soap and water and icing it can also relieve it, uh, again, because it's just a minor allergic reaction, uh, unless you're one of the few people that suffer severe allergic reaction. So there's no reaction. Reaction! You do get a rash, so reaction, kind of, reaction. That's the word I wanted. So if you do suffer from a, a reaction from touching one of these caterpillars, it's pretty easy to deal with and you shouldn't freak out or worry. 
Uh, if your child does, again, it's not something you should freak out and worry about. If you do notice that there's swelling or severe uh, symptoms, then you should definitely uh, seek medical attention. Um, but in most cases, it can be dealt with at home easily and you don't have to jam up emergency rooms. Uh, but we'll go over more details because there's actually a full write-up of what you can expect from coming in contact with these caterpillars. So let's go over that now. Uh, the hairs on the caterpillar are long and bristle-like and spread out in tufts down the sides. Two long, sharp black pencil-like hairs protrude near the front and rear of the creature. The creature, it's a caterpillar, it's not a creature. Um, and these hairs are connected to poison glands which excrete venom on contact. That's not true. Contact with venom does not generally cause too much of a problem. A nettle or poison ivy type rash often occurs, which can range from mild to slight reddening of the skin to burning, swelling, and pain, none of which should keep you away from your gardening duties for too long. Hypersensitive individuals may of course uh, experience more severe symptoms that could include swelling and nausea. This is when you're gonna to wanna to seek that medical attention. Um, washing the infected, infected? It's not really infected, it's affected. Washing the affected area with soap and water, taking an antihistamine or using ammonia. Again, ammonia, do not pee on it. Can't stress this enough. Don't let someone pee on your affected area, wherever that may be, especially if it's the face. I mean, unless you're into that kind of thing. If you're into that kind of thing, then that's probably the best way to take care of it. Um, I'm getting off track. I lost where I was with that pee comment. Never mind. Washing the affected area with soap and water, taking antihistamines, or applying ammonia, calamine lotion, or even a, something as simple as an ice pack can help to alleviate most minor symptoms fairly quickly. Uh, people who do experience more severe Reactions, however, should seek expert medical advice as soon as possible. As I've already said, uh, that's what you want to do if you come in contact with this and you experience the severe swelling, nausea, as well as the rash. Then you're going to want to see a doctor as you might need more serious medical attention. But most people are going to deal with it the easy way. Again, don't be on uh, So that's pretty much it. That's the caterpillar story. If you see it, just kind of Go the other way, avoid it like it's the plague because you don't want to deal with the symptoms that come from it. But you shouldn't freak out or worry if you do because you can take care of it in most cases simply. Okay, so that pretty much does it for this episode. Uh, we covered one story, it's out of the way, short and sweet. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, give me suggestions for future episodes because I have such a small audience, I'm very, very likely to cover what you want me to cover right now. When I, if I ever do blow up, it might not happen. Probably never gonna happen. So just give me suggestions and I'll cover them. Um, other than that, I'll see you next time. I am the Fox Fox saying, Fox off. <laughs>